Welcome back. If you guys have been watching my videos, do you guys know this poor Integra has been neglected basically all summer? I've just been focusing on fixing the 240 and getting it to where it is. The time has come where I need to start putting in some time, money, and effort into making this thing a reliable daily driver again. Because winter's coming, and this is unfortunately my winter beater. But this thing needs quite a bit of work. So throughout this video, I'll show you the little things that are going on with this car, such as... <laughs> that and a few other major issues like this which i'm actually still stumped on how this happens for some reason the right front axle nut will come loose i've torqued it to spec i've staked the nut into the little groove on the axle it'll always come loose three different axles have snapped the nut off after tightening it back so many times. I literally have no idea why this keeps happening and it's really sketchy because when this nut comes loose, the whole wheel bearing gets loose. I've even replaced the wheel bearing, same issue. Currently, this Integra has the USDM 32 millimeter Type R. This car has the JDM 36 millimeter Type R. Today, I wanna to show you guys my secret on how I made this five lug swap on this car using all USDM parts even though it's a JDM 36 millimeter. So that should hopefully fix this problem, which is my most concerning problem at this time. And also the coilovers are completely shot on it. So I doubt I'll find those today, but we'll get the hard stuff knocked out. Oh, and I forgot to show you guys this. Look at what happened to this poor car. So as you see, there is a towel over this power steering line. Why is there a towel there, you ask? Well, this power steering line decided to crap itself out and it leaked all the power steering fluid onto the alternator and the alternator shorted the battery so i had to buy a new battery so typically when i go to the junkyard i take two main things one is a tool bag full of basically all hand tools and then i have this toolbox that i've had for way too long that i've basically converted to all metric sockets and wrenches but all right let's go take a look at what's inside today Dang, this is pretty interesting to see in here. Another Jaguar. This one has nice red paint. I wonder if that one with the rolled green paint is still here. Dang, someone cut out the taillights. <laughs> oh, that's, that's classy. <laughs> it's got the tapes. I wonder what's on these. Tiny little shifter. Fancy, baby. Right behind it, we've got this EK Coupe. Someone really needed this rocker, I guess. I see treasure down there. What an interesting sight to see. Just half of a 240 just parked in the middle of the aisle. Damn. People went through this thing. Literally, they took the floor? Well, since this thing is still here, I'm gonna take a look at the fuel pump because these sending units are actually really hard to find and mine actually failed in my car before and it took me months to find one. This is probably one of the best condition fuel sending units I've ever seen. Usually this piece is just rotted out. What really wears out is this circuit board here and the contacts. Poor tag. Does it have the power steering line? It does. I just looked over and I noticed this dash here and it looks awfully familiar. And it's the 240 dash. <laughs> Mint condition, no cracks. It looks like this hose has already begun to dry rot and crack. Definitely not worth taking this one. We're gonna have to move on and find a CRV now. Well, I've never seen one of these in here. I'm not much of a muscle guy, but this is like basically the 240 of muscle cars, isn't it? I don't know. Oh my God, there's no floor. Good old pop-ups. There it is. So what we need off of this car is the complete knuckle assembly. Looks like this axle was recently changed as well. This nut isn't even staked. So hopefully that makes it not so hard to take off. Even though the cells look a little crusty, not a lot of people know this, but CRV 
calipers and rotors are the same exact part as Integra Type R. But the knuckle on these cars, however, is slightly different. The tie rod mount is in a different location, so you will need an alignment if you just slap these knuckles on there. What I'm gonna do is grab half of this axle and Frankenstein the axles together and hopefully that will work. But before I start ripping this car apart, there is another CRV in the yard. So I'm gonna look at that one first to see if it's maybe a little less rotted than this one. Ah, here it is. Oh yeah, I think these look a lot better. And the cool thing about a junkyard is you can find a nice clean workspace. Although this might not look nice, you can go to your local Hyundai and grab tan interior and tan is the best stuff to use because this is the worst interior option to ever exist and now we have a place to sit let's go ahead and snip that abs line we don't need that take off the brake line and the only line wrench that i'm missing is a 10 so that's cool vice grip save the day well now all we have to do is beat up all the joints to get out all of the sockets. And a lot of people I realize do this and it is not the right way to do it. They'll try and hammer up on the nut or the stud, but actually what you want to do is hit the knuckle. There's actually notches in the knuckle designed for this. You can see there's a little bump like right at the edge here. That's where you want to hit it and that will break this joint loose. Same goes for the tie rod mount and also the lower ball joint mount. Because if you hit the stud, then you'll end up damaging it. And the only thing we're going to reuse on this is the ball joint. Not that we care about the condition of it. But if you hit it hard enough, it could warp. And it'll make it very difficult to get out. So, we're just going to do it by the book method. And see, just by hitting it right there, it broke loose. Same with the tie rod mount. So normally, I would start taking off this axle nut here before I start removing everything else. But in this case, we actually want to take the outer piece of the axle. Woo -wee. I was in the process of trying to hammer out the axle stub from the axle shaft and I ended up destroying it. But I did manage to get the other side done and successfully remove the axle shaft stub. And I broke this axle out the rest of the way so we can at least take this less crusty knuckle for now. I'm just happy we got at least one out of there because that's all we really should need. But at least we got the fuel sending unit, the knuckles, and one of the output shafts. And I also picked up one of the B20 valve covers because I might just redo mine on the Integra. Since we're gonna be doing an alignment after all of this, I figured this would be a good time to check the toe in, toe out. And what that basically means is how far you can turn the wheel to the left versus how far you can turn the wheel to the right. It turns to the left, one, and almost a half, we'll say 0.4, 1.4. And to the right, one, not quite as far as the left. Basically the rack has been offset and shifted over, and that could be just from aligning the car so many times with all these swaps that I've been doing, and never centering the rack. So we're gonna do that while everything's apart. Now that we have the car on jack stands, the first thing I like to do before I take off the wheels is give it a shakedown just to verify everything is tight still. The side to side, up and down. That one feels fine. Let's try the one that's in question. Surprisingly, it feels fine right now. That's because I just tightened this axle nut recently. Let's start stripping this thing apart. Since my impact is dead, we're gonna use option number two. Put a screwdriver inside the fins in the rotor so that when you try and turn it left, it'll stop itself on the caliper. And then you take your socket, half inch extension, breaker bar, jack stand. Perfect. We're gonna be pressing down on this pretty hard so we don't want it to slip off of the axle nut. So this will convert the load that's going down and allow it to spin the way that we want it to. But I like to use the jack handle as extra leverage. So now I have loosened all the points on this knuckle. The tie rod end, the lower ball joint, and the upper control arm. 
And now I leave the nuts on here while I'm hammering onto the knuckle because if I accidentally miss and I hit the threads, that can make it very difficult to put this nut back on and have to re-tap it or just have to replace the ball joint in general. That goes for every single point. And since we're also gonna be doing an alignment, I figured it'd be a good idea to break this loose now. So I've already loosened up the tie rod end and the inner tie rod spins freely because that's a lot harder to do when you have the knuckle off of the car already and this has nothing to mount to and hold it in place. All I have to do is take off the brake line and this is ready to come off. Now we got the knuckle out of the way. The last thing we need to remove is the axle because we're not gonna be able to use these axles anymore because they won't fit in the new hubs. This axle is connected to the half shaft. So we won't have to worry about losing transmission fluid pulling this out. Oof, this thing is oily under here. I swear, Hondas just always leak oil. Just gotta hit it right around here. Ta-da! At this point in the video, this is where all of the important information is going to be discussed. Here's what we have to work with. This is what we just took off of the car. These are USDM Integra Type R front knuckles and the hubs are 32 millimeters. What is the significance of 32 millimeters? Well, the stock Integra is 32 millimeters. So if you had these 32 millimeter hubs, you wouldn't have to figure out what axle to run as opposed to the CRV 36 millimeters, which is the exact same as the Integra Type R in Japan. 36 millimeters. Now the differences between the knuckles, you can kind of barely tell, but this tie rod mount is different from this one. This one is a lot more out. This one's closer in, which means this actually has more steering angle. The brakes and rotors are identical between CRV and Integra Type R, USDM and JDM. And now for the fun part, axles. Base model and USDM Integra Type R axles work with 32 millimeters, but this 32 millimeter spline is not gonna fit in a 36 millimeter hub. So what do we have here? What axle is this? This is from a Prelude, and this is the driver's side axle. Prelude comes with two options, and it's SH or non-SH, which basically just means all wheel steering, limited slip. The measurements are close enough where you can use either, but you wanna get the shorter of the two if you have the option, which in this case is the base model. And why we use Prelude axles is the hub is 36 millimeters, so it'll fit into the spline. And this end will connect to the half shaft, which is identical to this one. The length isn't identical. This one's like a couple millimeters longer. So that's why this axle is a savior. You just go to the parts store and just get a Prelude axle. Now, the USDM passenger side axle, this is a different story. You can try to use the passenger side Prelude axle. And if you do, you'd want it to be the SH model. The SH is shorter on the passenger side and longer on the driver's side. Kind of weird how that works, but it is what it is but you'll run into an issue where that axle is still too long to fit inside an integra so here's what we are going to do today luckily we managed to get off this hub from the crv in the junkyard now this hub was a part of an axle shaft just like this one basically what we want to do is install the crv output shaft onto the integra mid shaft i guess is that what it's called i don't know the middle part of the axle, we're gonna install this outer part on. Now, I've never done this, so we'll see if it works. But it doesn't have to be a CRV. You can also use a Prelude outer for this side as well. But I also wanted to show you guys to continue the mystery of what caused this right side to fail. Check out the play in this thing. The bearing is not supposed to have that much play when it's disconnected. Like this one's solid. Like I said before, I've replaced the wheel bearing multiple times. I don't know. This is the whole reason for doing this swap in the first place. Plus, it's a cool little ride up if it works. Before I put all this stuff together, I'm gonna start with this axle. I'm gonna make sure this axle will actually work. Now that we actually have somewhat of a place to work, we can do this with the vise and not on the ground at the junkyard. So I have slid the boot back. Now we have all of the internals exposed. What you want to do is have this basically at full lock in a position where one of the six studs on the inside are visible. And the correct tool to use for this would be a brass hammer, but I don't have one of those. I have a normal hammer. I'm going to have to be very cautious to make sure I'm not damaging the material. Now we can get a closer look inside. This is the 32 millimeter, the original Integra. And this is the one from the CRV or the Prelude. 
The internals look pretty similar. The housing construction does look just a little bit different. It appears that the tone ring is in a different location. This tone ring is only for ABS, so we're not worried about that because we don't run ABS. Now we're gonna start aligning the 36 millimeter hub onto the shaft. Hopefully the splines line up. Looks like it doesn't work. The spline count is different. I'm wondering if the fact that this is an aftermarket axle played some role with the splines being different. But for now, I'm going to assemble the side that we know is going to work. And then we have to start figuring out what I'm gonna do with the other axle. So remember, this is the prelude axle. Slide it right on. And then we'll just take our CRV knuckle here. I went ahead and fully mounted this knuckle. Everything is completely mounted and the only thing left to do on this side is bleed the caliper. Now we're going to begin the other side. And I found another possible solution for an axle to use. This is a 2000 Prelude Type SH. This axle is shorter than the base model Prelude for the USDM passenger side. Let's just cross our fingers and hope this works. It has a 36 millimeter output and a 32 millimeter input into the transmission. The mid shaft is only about an inch longer than the stock Integra. So we might be cutting it close or we might have found a new solution. So I've installed the Prelude axle onto the side. It does fit into the transmission correctly but the shaft is just slightly too long and it's not hitting the seal correctly. As you can see, it's dripping fluid out. So there's like a small gap, just enough to let fluid pass through. So I'm gonna take out the axle and we're gonna compare the Prelude versus the Integra and see what our options are. Here's the Prelude, here's the Integra. And this is the output side. You can see that the Prelude is slightly longer and a better way to show that is to put them butt to butt so you can see that there's a gap on the integra side which means the prelude one is longer and that gap is made from the spline distance you can see the prelude side bottoming out to the integra smooth side and then the integra is shorter another comparison housing to housing where that boot ring sits you can see how much longer the prelude is as well what i want to try to do is swap the transmission side of the integra axle onto the prelude shaft <laughs> oh, the Integra input shaft fits onto the main shaft of the Prelude axle, but the boot is different because the Prelude had the ridges and the Integra one was just a solid circle, so it doesn't really fit. But Seth says he might have an axle of an Integra that matches this style. So mm -hmm. we're gonna go stop at his house and hopefully he has it. Yep. Moment of truth. Ah, oh, it is smooth. Damn. Dang, that car looks so sick. Maybe that's fun. Well, I think what I'm gonna try and do is trim back these grooves with a razor blade because swapping this whole boot is a really difficult task and I'm not really up for that right now. I have to admit, this is one of the strangest things I've had to do to a car, but it's just part of the process. So we've removed our three grooves. One, two, three. And those were the grooves that were sitting inside of this right here on the Prelude axle stub. So now we have a perfectly round boot on this Prelude axle. Just finished completing the custom axle and I put the clamp on there as well. There are some bumps that still stick up, but that's just from the boot itself. That's not anything internal, but it is sealed all the way back to its factory spec. So it's definitely going to hold up very well. Another thing to mention is the play in this feels the exact same as the Prelude stub on the Integra axle. So it almost feels identical to each other. Let's see if it works. The axle is in and fully seated. No leaks. So we've got the knuckle completely on and torqued to spec. Next we have to bleed the brakes. I need to top off the trans fluid as well for whatever dripped out of it. The fun process of bleeding brakes. Well, there we go, that's a steady stream. <laughs> now for the moment of truth, the test drive. Would you like to take a ride in the storage unit? 
just get it. <laughs> We're gonna have to clear out this. <laughs> oh my gosh, all them oh, skateboards. This is where my 240 carpet went. Oh, I forgot this thing is stacked with boards. Are you seats? Yeah. I don't think this thing is gonna start. The super dim light. <laughs> Damn. Oh, we're gonna go steal a battery. This is probably the sketchiest way to start a car, but this is how you do it if you're in a pickle. Start it. Hold on, it's in reverse. <laughs> I'll hold it up. You got the battery? Yeah. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Man. Yeah, highly don't recommend that. But hey, if it works, it works. Dude, this thing runs pretty good for sitting for so Dude, long. Dude, it sounds so healthy. It's like, right? Oh, it moves under its own power. So far, so good with the axles. Should probably put the battery back in there. Let me do that real quick. Oh, it's cool to be back in this car. We're gonna go for a few laps around the block just to make sure that the drivetrain is all good to go. So far, so good. Yeah, we, yeah boy. This thing is mint. Right hand drive. So hyped. Oh, that means that the axle swap works. All that hard work and Frankenstein activities actually paid off. I really hope that helps someone achieve five lug without paying the super tax prices these days. Just make it yourself. Well, it got a little too dark last night to check if there were any leaks and look over the car. So I come back today and it snowed. It's crazy because we started off this episode in a t-shirt and it was really nice outside. And in just a couple days, it's snowing and freezing. So I'm gonna jack up the front end here and get under the car and just verify everything's good. Also, if anyone is interested in restoring these Type R knuckles, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just gonna post them on Marketplace. The jack does not sound too happy. <laughs> And just out of habit, the first thing I like to do when jacking up a car is just checking the suspension, making sure everything's tight, and it looks like we're good. So let's check the axle. Dry, no leaks. Super good. Brakes, no leaks. And the other side's looking good as well. Well, I'm super hyped on that. That's really exciting that this axle swap worked out. Now we need to figure out what I'm gonna do with all the skateboards that are in the car still. Just remember the other thing I wanted to do is figure out the exhaust. I think a couple years ago I was backing up onto a driveway and the resonator got stuck on something and it just tweaked the whole exhaust. But let's see how close we can get this. Well, it looks like it's missing at least one hanger here. When I push it up, it's still hanging just a little bit just because it was bent in the middle. And since it's so cold outside, I'm not trying to redo the entire exhaust right now. So I'll just hang this up for the time being. This little guy right here makes all the magic happen. That's much better. It may not be perfectly centered, but you know what? For a winter beater, that's totally fine. 
it's not dragging on the ground. And all of these boards are either broken or just so chipped up that they're not good anymore. I think this is one of my most favorite grips I've done. Go for it. <laughs> this Integra is the exact car that taught me everything I know about cars and has led me to be able to do something like this. I started learning about cars on a much smaller scale and it's just grown and grown and grown and I've just kept running with it and learning more and more and more. It's just always so fascinating to me and interesting to just build things and create things and make it your own. And I guess that also ties into today's video with the five lug swap. I just basically made this work out of random parts. So anyone can do this stuff. I'm not something crazy. I'm not some genie and you can do it too. So just stick with it. Just have a goal in mind and follow through to the end. That's literally all it is with anything in life. And then share it with the world. Don't hide all the information. Otherwise it was really for nothing. I know I'm rambling on a little bit, but I really hope that this video inspired you guys to either five lug swap your Hondas or to just be creative and see things through to the end. Even though it's not the end officially and just appreciating the process because the process is the journey and the journey is the fun of it. If you don't enjoy the journey, you're not gonna enjoy the end goal life tip for you. I know I didn't really go into the rear five lug stuff because this wasn't really supposed to be a five lug video, but it kind of turned into one. I'll go over that eventually. The way I did it on this is kind of complicated and I'm not too happy with it. So I might try and redo this and make it a little better and user friendly, but I'll be sure to make that an entire five lug video going over everything all at once and less confusing than this video. <laughs> This video is more so just the process and the journey of how I got to this stage. In the five look video, it'll be more of a how to, not so much a will this work. <laughs> Dash? What? 